now we move to unit six it's the last one in our course it is entitled risk uh, of course it uh, discusses risk in business and it asks you are you a risk taker um, we start with a vocabulary uh, that uh, is used to describe risk we have exercise number a verbs in the box that are used when talking about risk we have verbs like anticipate, calculate, eliminate, encounter, estimate, evaluate, face, foresee, uh, gauge, identify, measure, minimize, uh, reduce, spread, weigh up, prioritize. All these are verbs that discuss risk with different degrees and different meanings. So he puts for us four columns, asking us to classify those who go with prediction, those who go with the verb meet, other verbs that go with assess, and finally with manage. Under predict, we can say anticipate and foresee. Under meet, we can have face, encounter, identify. Under assess, we can have calculate, estimate, evaluate, gauge, and we can also use uh, way up and of course the word measure manage is a different column uh, that we can put under it also words like eliminate minimize um, reduce spread prioritize these are the verbs that go with manage as for exercise number B, it asks you to match sentences with their halves from newspaper extracts. I've given you their answers, but we can read them together. Number one goes with letter E. The whole sentence says, during the credit crunch, crunch means recession. Many businesses face the risk of running out of money. We can reduce risk. This is number two. We can reduce risk by spreading our lending across more markets. This is letter F. And number one goes with letter E. Number two goes with letter F. Now we move to number three. Trying to minimize risk is an important part of business strategy. This is letter G. Number four, it is impossible to, letter D, eliminate all risk when entering a new market. Eliminate means to end. Number five, it's difficult to foresee the risks. Letter C, involved in setting up a new business. Number six, actuaries, calculate risk. Letter B, in order to advise insurance companies. The actuaries or the actuaries, the persons who compile and analyze statistics and use them to calculate insurance uh, risks and premiums. Number seven, it's important to consider the risks involved when sending staff to work in dangerous locations and this is this is called exercise number c these adjectives can be used with the word risk complete them with the missing vowels i've already completed them for you number one is slight number two great number three minuscule number four considerable number five potential number six immediate number seven huge number eight remote Number nine, series. Number 10, negligible. Number 11, significant. Number 12, imminent. Number three, substantial. Number 14, terrible. And number 15 is tremendous. Of course, these adjectives have different meanings. Some of them, in exercise number D, have a high level of risk. For example, like great, considerable, huge, serious, significant, substantial, terrible, and tremendous. And there are others that describe a low level, a low level of risk. For example, like slight, minuscule, remote, and negligible. Number two in exercise number D asks you about the adjectives that are used for possible future risk. We have the word potential. And for a risk in the very near future, it is immediate or imminent. So this is for the vocabulary. Now we move to the reading. Now we move to the reading. In the reading, we have exercise number E that asks us to find words in the article which mean the following. These words, of course, are very important. Number one says, when the maker of a product is responsible for an injury that the product causes, 
This is called liability. Number two, money that a court orders someone to pay to someone else. This is called damages. Number three, the collection of all policies held by an insurer. This is called portfolio. Number four, the total combined risks that could be involved in a single loss event. This is called accumulation. As for number five, a terrible event that causes a lot of destruction and suffering. This is called catastrophe. We use these words in exercise number F. Number one, they are being sued for damages by clients who they advised to invest in an insurance company that went bankrupt. Number two, the defect in her car caused the accident and she is suing the company for product liability. Number three, the region was devastated by a natural catastrophe. Number four, it's safer to spread your liability by holding a portfolio of risks. Number five, an accumulation of risk happens when there is a concentration of risks that might give rise to very large losses from a single event. Exercise number E again asks you about vocabulary in the text. Now we are going to form expressions from words from one to five with uh, words from letters A to E. They go as follows. Number one, bear, bear the brunt. Bear the brunt is letter B. The brunt means put up with the worst of some, uh, some bad circumstances. It means you cope with what is bad and you can, you know, go on. Number two, we have the word spring. Spring, we have letter C, spring to mind, which means comes across your mind. Number three, we have meet. This is letter E, which is meet a need. Number four, we have pave, it's letter A, pave the way. Number five, we have spread, this is spread risks, it's letter D. Okay, now we move to exercise number H, where we are to match the expressions in the previous exercise, exercise G, with their meanings. Number one, immediately think of something, this is spring to mind. Number two, make it possible for something to happen in the future, it, this is pave the way. Number three, suffer the worst part of something unpleasant, which is bear the brunt. Number four, reduce the chance of a large loss by sharing risks. This is spread the risks. Number five, be good enough to do what someone needs, wants, or expects. This is uh, meet a need. Now I move to the last section, which is language review. It discusses the adverbs of degree. We can use some adverbs to strengthen the meaning of adjectives, and we can use others to soften the meaning. Of course, we know that an adverb is used to describe an adjective. When I say that, she is very beautiful. I can say that she is absolutely beautiful. I can say that she is slightly beautiful. So you see here that the adverbs can affect the degree uh, of the adjective. Exercise number A. Um, asks you which of the following adverbs strengthen the adjective and the which follow and which soften it. We have words in the box. A bit means to soften entirely, exceptionally, extremely. They are strong adverbs. Fairly is soften. Fully, highly, increasingly, they are strong adverbs. Moderately is to soften the adjective. Quite is to strong or strengthen it rather reasonably slightly somewhat this is to soften and we have also totally and very totally and very are to strengthen the adjectives that follow them we're going to make use of these adverbs in exercise number b what were your sales results like last year the answer is Space, good. I made my targets with two months to spare. We can say very good, exceptionally good, for example, or extremely good. Because he said I made my targets, so we have to use a kind of a strong adverb. Number two, what is your new CEO like? Extremely talented and space intelligent. She brings out the best in people, so we can say high intelligent. I mean highly intelligent or very intelligent. Number three, do you really think we should invest in an volatile market? We can say in an increasingly 
exceptionally or extremely. Number four, what did you think of the HR director's presentation? To be honest, I don't think she was. She was, you can say, fully or very prepared. She seemed to be reading it most of the time. Finally, we move to number five. Are you confident that the merger will go ahead? Confident, although we still need a few more meetings to sort out one or two problems. You can say quite confident, you can say reasonably confident, you can say fairly confident. With this, we end unit six. Thank you very much.